Before I get started on the video today, I just wanted to show you guys the finished product from the last video that I did. I had refurbished an old metal ladder stand in which all the straps were rotted, the seat was rotted, and it was starting to rust out. So I put a new seat on it, uh, I'm getting ready to put new straps on it, and I sponge painted it camouflage. If you guys have not watched Jeff Sturgis, you're missing out. I'm going to go ahead and set up one of his grapevine mock scrapes on this trail today. I'm going to get my trail camera and move it down here, and I've got a place marked for a tree stand so I can hunt this on a west wind. The real nice thing is it's only about two tenths of a mile from the road, and everything but the last 15 yards is on a hiking trail. So it's really going to help hide my scent as I come in here because deer are so used to humans walking on that hiking trail coming in. I've been using these now about two years and it's amazing the videos that I get. Uh, this is actually right in the middle of a trail and this is actually a tree that looks like it had a rub on it at one time in the past. So I'm going to go ahead and set this so it's about waist height. Thinking as well too that when the leaves fall off the trees uh, some of that weight is lost and this is going to raise up in the air a little bit in the fall. So I'm going to leave it just a tad long to make up for that in the fall. Go ahead. Tie it off here about waist height where I want it. So there's a grapevine mock scrape sitting right here. You can see the dog's height right there. It's about 12 inches above his back. Every deer that's going to come through here on this trail is going to hit it. And uh, I also have some code blue uh, pre-orbital gland. Uh, this is one that has uh, like a deodorant stick on it. So very simply, I'm going to hold the top of the stick. I've been trying to be real careful not to hold the bottom of the stick. Just hit this bottom of this with this pre-orbital gland this first time. And then after that first time, I won't touch it with this scent anymore because the deer and their own orbital glands will take care of it. But just a little something to attract that first couple of deer that come by. So I'm going to find a stick now, and I'm going to clean out an area that's a scrape right underneath this. that you see right here. I've got two deer trails that converge. I've got a deer trail that's coming up out of this thick stuff and i got a deer trail that's coming from here. So right here at the intersection of these two trails I went ahead and put this grapevine mock scrape in. It's tied on a small branch so as the deer hit it it'll move. You'll hear the leaves above it. And then I put this scrape down below here that I just dug out with a stick. I'm going to go ahead and urinate on it, get a camera over here, and it'll be all set.
So there we go. There's the camera up, angled down towards the scrape. Just got a couple of branches around it just to give it a little bit more of some breakout. Okay, ready? Come on, let's go. Let's go to the next place. Hop in, go. Go boy. So for those of you that take your dogs places, uh, this is an awesome back seat cover. Uh, it not only covers the very back of the truck and the bottom of the truck, but it covers the back of your front seats. Oof timber. And then it's got a zipper part that comes up right here and hangs. So the dog is like totally enclosed in what looks like a bathtub. Come on out, buddy. Let's go. Come. Come here. I gotta show these guys. So it gives you an idea of exactly what it looks like. Really pretty slick. Like I said, I'll put a link on Amazon in the description. 32 bucks, tough to beat, saves your seats. Yeah. There it is, it zips him right up in there. You comfy, buddy? Okay, let's go to another place, doggy. So if you take a look, I get this major trail. It's going out to a creek right here. Got this clear cut. It's probably about five to eight years old here. Comes from another clear cut back there and there's this awesome trail that comes right through these hemlocks. And then right behind me, it drops off this edge right into a swamp. So I'm gonna be hunting out of this big oak tree right here, this red oak with the north wind. I'm going to go ahead today leaving my camera up where it is right there and I'm going to create a grapevine mock scrape right on this major trail right here. This is an awesome place right here because I barely have any obstruction for shooting lanes. just makes it a lot easier on public land. Here it is right in the middle of this trail, just below waist height. Again, that'll raise up as all these leaves fall off. But I'm going to go ahead and create a mock scrape in this area right now. And this is actually the view that I have from the camera of this trail. It's passing by me about 12 yards from my tree stand. With this nice grapevine mock scrape that I just put right in the middle of it. Thank you, Jeff Sturgis. Grapevine mock scrape number two is done. SD card has changed. Tree is ready to go. I've had my cameras out for a month. This is now July 1st. And I put the cameras out the end of May, first weekend of June. So I will not be back into these places right now 
until the end of August, maybe beginning of September even. Uh, just trying to make sure that I have the cameras in the appropriate places and all the cameras I set out a month ago are working. And uh, it'll be exciting to come back in August and September and check these cameras. I've still got eight more cameras that I need to check um, after this first month. So today I'm looking to try and get five cameras done. I think in two of them I actually am going to pull out and put other places on some food sources. It'll be a long day today. Just break down what I have in my backpack today going out to check cameras. I mean I've got my keys and I've got all my SD cards. That's really important. Got some camo tape. I've got some strings, some paracord. I got a drill uh, for another great um, grapevine mock scrape that I have in the truck here that I got from private property. I've got my actual grapevine here with a string already attached to it. Some extra batteries if I need them in a camera. Uh, spare batteries for my actual Vixia camera and my actual uh, GoPro. Some zip ties if they're needed and my phone which I use a ton. I've also got a climbing stick to help me up to uh, get any uh, cameras or SD cards out that I have seven or eight feet up in the air. I also have my spray bottle here so that I can hit uh, all the strings that I touch, camera, anything else that I touch with the ozone spray before I leave. Just kicked the buck up right there. I still see him walking down there. third mock scrape of the day done. Well this is the last Sturgis grapevine mock scrape I'm setting up today. Uh, this one doesn't have any branches hanging over it so what I'm going to use is a climbing stick on two trees, tie a rope across those two trees and then I'll go ahead and I will hang uh, the grapevine mock scrape from that string that goes across between those two trees. So to the very top of this I'm going to tie in with a zip tie, a white oak branch, and, uh, and a red oak branch. Uh, you definitely like to have a little bit of noise up above there ahead. And the um, nice thing is about the red oak branches, red oak leaves tend to stay on the stems for a much longer period of time, where pretty much everything else, once it dies and wilts, the leaves just fall right off. So these red oak leaves should stay up Hopefully most of the season has look modified grapevine mock scrape with some uh, red oak branches hanging onto it so they've got a little bit of sound up above their head as they're rubbing their orbital glands at the base of this. Fourth grapevine mock scrape of the day. Last one I'm doing today. Head back to the truck. We got one more place to stop where I'm just changing an SD card. Right pup? You ready to go home buddy? Okay, let's go. Come on, buddy. Uh, Lee and I are out today on a property that we've already been on twice. This is our third time. Uh, we're really excited because it's a cornfield that borders right up against some public land. So we just found a little ridge that we're going to go ahead and set up a stand at. And Lee found this uh, beach branch that we think is going to be a perfect place to set up a grapevine mock scrape. So the first thing I'm going to do is get the camera set up here. And then once the camera is set up, we're going to go get the grapevine mock scrape set up. And then we'll get out of here and uh, come back in a month and see what we get. So psyched to have these new one sticks, man. I've been waiting on them forever. Make it a lot easier to get up and down. What are they, 15 ounces a piece? Yeah, yeah, just under a pound. It's great. So I got a cable lock on my camera that I'm going to set up here. I've got to find the right key. You guys notice I've got this real bright lanyard. 
so that if I ever lose this in the woods, I can go back on my track and hopefully it's easier to find. It's a lot easier to go ahead also and uh, get this unlocked before you climb up on the tree. Okay, this is what happens when you forget your lineman's belt. I had a difficult time getting this up here, but I got the paracord up. I got it locked. So Lee and I have got a piece of string tied on one tree because the place that we want this grapevine mock scrape, this beech tree just is not straight. Yeah, I think that's great. Waist tight right there. Immediately blow it so that's in the center. Finished product for Lee and I, if you take a look behind us, you, you've got this real thick stuff and about 40 or 50 yards before the cornfield, it opens up into this area that we're sitting right here. We've got some natural openings to shoot through. We've got a nice oak tree right here that we're gonna be able to get up into and a camera there. And there it is. We've got our grapevine mock scrape and you can see down below at the cornfields. We are done with scouting in New York. Lee and I went out this morning and checked our last place that we had to that we've been trying to get to for three or four weeks and found a couple more money spots today that we're excited about, uh, moved a camera, had another camera uh, that was too close to the trail and was only picking up butts as the deer were triggering it and almost getting past the camera so we adjusted that. But New York State scouting is done for 2022. Time to go back and evaluate and get an idea of all of our stand location possibilities. Uh, we've got 10, 11 cameras out on public land. We know another one's going out soon. So middle to end of August, early September, we'll come back and evaluate uh, what we see on those cameras. And then we'll uh, decide what two state forest areas we're gonna hunt in the fall. And we'll come up with a short list of stands uh, that are going to be the ones that we're going to be focusing on depending upon the wind directions that we have. Uh, Lee and I still have a trip down to Pennsylvania in about three weeks uh, doing overnight not only to go ahead and do some scouting but have some beers. Absolutely. Stay overnight in a tent, sit around a campfire. Hopefully it's better than last year where we uh, had pissing, pissing rain. rain and couldn't sit around a campfire. Um, but uh, other than that we're ready to go uh, only two and a half months now until the opening day of archery season and we're ready for it to be tomorrow. Okay buddy, thanks man. Absolutely. It's fun. Yep. See you guys.